this episode, we're going to show you the 15 different boats we looked at during our almost two-year boat search, as well as the process we took along the way. So what do you do when you want to buy a boat? You go find places that have boats, like the boat show. I mean, maybe it's not the most realistic thing, and most of us don't have a million dollar budget, but it is a good place to get some ideas. So before we get into the list of the boats we looked at, let's go look at some of these sick, expensive boats, just for fun. This is a 41 Juno Sun Odyssey. Oh, I thought 41 it. 16 foot beam, three cabin. Oh, my thank you. Tell me more. Three cabin. There's a lot of storage in these little things. Too. There is a sailboat out there. Where are they going? Oh, I got one. <laughs> <laughs> I said, can sleep there? I like all the light. I like the sleep the 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 Oh, okay. What you doing? You like this? You got your own sand in here. All right, that's about enough of that. We might as well be looking at mansions on the water. Time for reality to sink in and start looking for things that are actually in our budget, like maybe from the 70s or 80s. So let's get to it. The list. See, it even says it right there. All right, going back to 2018. We don't have any footage from this one. And wait a second, this one wasn't in our budget. Come to think of it, I can tell you two or three of these weren't in our budget. Hmm, wonder who wanted to look at those. Anyway, this was a 41 Hunter. It was nice. We really didn't know what we were looking for and half of what we were looking at when it came to all the sailing stuff. And the broker actually asked us at one point, why don't you guys look for a trawler? To which I replied, we can't very well learn to sail on a trawler. Okay, number two. Haha, uh -huh, you said number two. <laughs> so this one was a 1976 Contest 34. It was owned by a younger family with a few kids as well that had tried to have their own sailboat adventure, but ultimately listed their boat for sale. It was a little bit on the small side for what we were looking for, but the girls had fun getting on their first boat during our search. There's a microwave! Microwave! There's a microwave. What? What, Marley? Microwave. She said, can we still watch the taro? We can cook with it! But this could be my coffee area. First boat looking at it. Oh, you want to see all the kids? They're already fighting over the bed. Yeah, or, in that, or in that one, I could have this. First boat, what do you think? Make sure you guys turn all the lights off. Okay. Whatever you touch, turn it off. 
Okay, on to number three, Danielle's favorite. Also one of those out-of-the-budget ones I was telling you about before. This 1998 Endeavor Victory was owned by a local rigger who we've bought some of our running rigging from, and we were more or less invited to come check out their boat. Ah, yes, a catamaran. Moving on. Number four. We took a drive over the Skyway down to Sarasota to look at this 1996 Gemini 105, one of three catamarans we looked at. They are smaller than most cats, which also means they're not so stupid expensive. Pokemon. Of course. This one had a 34 foot length and a 14 foot beam. Most of these came with a single 27 horsepower Westerbeek diesel attached to a drive similar to an outdrive you'd find on an inboard outboard boat. It seems like a common thing though is to replace all that with a regular outboard, like this one. The cool thing about these boats is their ability to get in really shallow water as they have retractable center boards and rudders that can bring the draft from about five and a half feet down to only one and a half feet. Beer in the fridge? Sold. All right, I'm gonna let these clowns take over for this one. Is this thing on? Is it recording? Good morning. Today we're gonna go look at a 1984 Catalina. It's in Carpet Springs, Florida. That's all we know. That's all we know. It's not a four cabin catamaran. I know. I saw a six bedroom catamaran the other day. Girl, dream. On another note. <laughs> we we'll driving. So this was the first boat we looked at in 2020. It had all new standing and running rigging, bimini, dodger. But this is when I realized I just wanted more space inside the boat. And I wanted to start looking at some center cockpit design boats with an actual cabin in the back. Number six was a 1977 Irwin 37. It was the least expensive boat we looked at, but definitely needed some work. We ended up looking at three other Irwins after this one. Ted Irwin, known in the sailing community, built these boats right here in Pinellas County. Number seven. We have arrived to Newport Ritchie to look at another 37 Irwin, coincidentally on the same canal that we took the charter boat out last year. Oh, so this 1976 Irwin started off promising. It was much cleaner than the previous one. It had a brand new Bimini and Dodger that fully enclosed the cockpit. It had a solid arch on the back and just seemed to have a decent amount of room inside, especially with the rear cabin. The issues just started from below, not to mention a broken off skeg underneath the boat that's supposed to protect the rudder. Now a lot of boats have dirty bilges, but this one just didn't give us warm and fuzzies. Moving on. We're arriving in Apollo Beach right now. The name of this marina is Land's End Marina. How do you feel? I feel How do you feel? How do you feel? I feel cold. You feel cold? Well, that's good. It's better than feeling hot. How do you feel, Danielle? What? This one will be a quickie. This was a 1969 or 71 Prout catamaran. Plain and simple, this was a project boat. We just had to go look at it because it was a cheap catamaran. Actually, there's no such thing as cheap catamarans as you'd have to put a billion dollars into this one. Today is Monday, June 29th. Happy birthday, Daddy! And it's his birthday. He's old now. Super old. And all I wanted to do for my birthday was go look at a boat. This was a 1986 Hunter 34. To tell you the truth, I'm not sure why we looked at this one. It was way too small for us. Must have been the price. The phrase, go big or go home, comes to mind. This would probably be a good starter boat for some people who have never sailed before, though. Hmm. Where the heck would the dogs go? June 30th. 
20. Boat number 10. This is a 1973 Golf Star 41 center cockpit catch in Ruskin, Florida. Everything looks good on paper. And then you show up and it's a float turd muffin. So we ever do. Look at boats. That is all right we now. ever do for right Daddy, now is look at boats. This is all I ever do. Oh. Pokemon! Smile. Oh, that's so much better. <laughs> okay, we'll see how it goes. So this was a 1973 Golf Star 41 center cockpit catch. A catch is just a schmancy sailboat term for a sailboat with two masts. Danielle had her favorite, and this boat was mine. You know, besides my actual favorite, which was the one that we bought. So looking from the rear cabin forward, the head is right here. Yeah, this is the engine room. Maisie just opened it for us. This is pretty amazing how much space is in here. This is the engine room. That's a heater. You put coals in it. Another bird. It's 100 degrees on this boat. It wasn't 100 degrees in the water, which is where I ended up checking out the bottom. The engine was older and had a few leaks, had some blow by, the shaft had some wobble to it, and the whole thing just smoked yeah. a little bit too much for my liking. So we kept on the search. Number 11 was a 1977 Morgan Heritage 38. It was a center cockpit catch, but it was in pretty rough shape. We really didn't spend a whole lot of time looking at this one. Number 12 was an Ericsson 35. This outside deck on this boat was super clean, and this boat was currently being used, as opposed to a lot of the boats we had been looking at that had been sitting. This one was again on the smaller side though, and the lack of space did end up turning us away. A small quarter berth in the back just isn't going to cut it. The one thing this boat did have going for it though was a separate stand-up shower. I still have fun to make video of Pokemon. It's an O'Day 35. Doesn't matter what year it is at this point. This 1989 O'Day 35 was one of the cleanest boats we looked at, inside and out. Danielle and the girls really liked this one, but again, it was on the smaller side and had a quarter berth in the back. Almost there. This was a 1983 Irwin 37. This boat had decent interior and was the only boat we looked at that had a bow thruster, which would make a huge difference in maneuverability. It did, however, have a good amount of water damage and a bunch of soft spots up on deck. I did not get any exterior picks on this one. Last but not least. Boat number 15. 89, Irwin, center cockpit. Just got posted, probably not gonna budge much because it just got posted. But it looks nice on paper, like all of them. Fourth boat in the same neighborhood. This Irwin 38 MK2 center cockpit was one of the newest and biggest of the Irwins we looked at. The listed length overall is 40 feet to the front of the bow sprit, but with the bow railing and a dinghy hanging off of the davits in the back, it's a total of about 47 feet. The beam is just over 12 feet, 3 inches, and the draft is 4 and a half feet. Yeah. <laughs> the space on deck made it seem like twice the size of some of the smaller boats we were on. I was really excited about the rear deck on this one. Plenty of extra seating and extra space to fish off of too. The interior seemed pretty decent and roomy enough. There were couches on both sides, and the starboard side had an L-shaped bench with a table that drops down to make it a bigger bed as well. The V-berth in the front was good size and had one of the heads off of it too. There was a decent amount of countertop space behind the companionway stairs and a nice spot to sit at the nav station as well. Moving back to the aft cabin, this one just had a very comfortable amount of room. I was really feeling good about this boat. Next step was to talk it over and make an offer pending a sea trial. 
Thanks for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't see our first intro video, check it out and help us out by hitting the subscribe button and get notified next time a video comes out. Maisie, tell Claude thanks for the hat. Tell Claude thanks for the hat. What is this? Claude bought it. That's Claude's hat. Don't drop it. Yeah, don't drop it.